the courtroom. Anna stood facing the bench. The court clerk sat in front of her. The child affairs officer sat to the left of the court clerk. Her lawyer sat to her right, and the two lawyers representing the accuser, father of her children, sat to her left. A temporary silence dominated the courtroom's atmosphere. This had preceded an outburst from the prosecution when Anna's request to have their client absent from the courtroom had been granted. The gallery was empty to the human eye, but it was full for Anna. The leader, Magnolia Lass, Piedri, Alex, Dimitri, and many other friends had filled the courtroom. They all waited with her, for her, in her, and around her. Anna straightened her back, for she knows her power. Her centuries of courage would not let her down this day. Anna was on trial as a mother protecting her children from an abusive father. Well, Anna, please tell us your story, said the judge. Describe the day you decided to seek a divorce. It was a normal day, nothing out of the ordinary. Anna paused as she felt the prosecutor shift in their seats. An ordinary day? The judge questioned, exclaiming, and said, Please explain it. My two older children had gone to school, and I was in the kitchen preparing breakfast for my youngest child when I heard him screaming for me. I ran out into the living room. His father had him by his legs upside down, and his head was being banged against the floor. I immediately scooped my son up into my arms and asked his father what he was doing. Anna paused. Well, did he answer? The judge asked. Yes, he said yoga. Then he shouted, calling me, you old hag. His form of supposed yoga was to torture the children. He turned his back and strolled out. I went back into the kitchen to get the breakfast for my son. Was your son crying? The judge asked. He had stopped crying. He was used to it. He started eating his breakfast. I then went upstairs to the bedroom. His father was getting ready for work, choosing a tie. I looked at him and said, We are over. And he immediately said without hesitation and shouting, Yes, we are. And you'd better find another job immediately. Anna stopped. Please, continue with your story said the judge. Anna told her of the meeting with a charming, intelligent, extremely talented photographer and artist, how he had swept her off her feet and made her feel loved, the bullying, the emotional abuse, the years she spent enabling his self-absorbed world, how she had nursed his father through cancer, his mother through depression, given birth to three children alone, nursed him through depression, worked with him to publish two photo books, helped develop his company, been isolated from family and friends, how he emotionally and physically abused the children, and how after 26 years of marriage, she had one day known with all her heart and soul that the time of torture was up, and that she was ready to free herself and move on. She talked of how after their separation he had continued to harass her, and of all the times during the 26 years she had tried to leave, but always been pulled back. When she had finished, a silence filled the courtroom. The child affairs officer began questioning her. She answered all questions truthfully, even if they seemed they might be damning to her. The prosecutor started his line of questioning. As Anna was talking, the door by the judge's bench started rattling. Someone was trying to get in. Everyone paused and looked at the door. Anna knew that it was him, the man of her nightmare, the abuser. 
The questions from the prosecutor, which were more like lectures to the court, shrieked through Anna's mind. The judge and her lawyer often broke in with reprimands for disrespectful wording and aggressive behaviour. Anna kept her composure, until after yet another five-minute question, he sat back, crossed his arms, and waited for her answer. Anna looked at him and asked if that had been a question. He nodded. I wasn't sure whether it was a question or not, for you seem more intending on getting your personal views to an audience. Please, if you have a question for me, make it brief. He started up again in his usual manner. Anna looked at him and said, I am sorry, I cannot answer that, for I do not understand it. His assistant then took over question after question, trying to attack her very sanity. Anna stayed strong and composed. When the questioning had finished, the judge asked Anna if there was anything she would like to add. Anna bowed her head in thought. After a short while, she raised her head, looked at the judge and said, I am sorry. To be truly frank with you, I am exhausted. Please, allow me a few more seconds. I know this has been incredibly trying for you. Take your time, the judge said. Anna felt her heart steady and the light of justice over her. She slowly lifted her head. I have one request to ask of the court. Please, interview the children, for all this aggression can be put to a stop. I brought letters from the children today to the court. They desperately want their voices to be heard. Thank you. You may return to your seat, said the judge. The judge asked the child affairs officer if he could interview the children. He answered affirmatively. Then the prosecutor requested and badgered the court for the opportunity for their client to meet with the children once before the interview. He was asked why, and he said that their father needs to explain this situation to them. The judge then asked Anna if this would be agreeable, and Anna said, definitely not. Then the prosecutor started attacking Anna again, saying that there is no proof for her accusations, at which moment Lady Justice whispered, The children are the proof you need. The judge called for a recess, and with the children's letters in her hand retired to her chamber. After about ten minutes, she returned. Her eyes rested on Anna. Would you consider the children meeting with their father just once before the interview? It would be terrible for the children, Anna said. The judge looked at the prosecutor and said, Your request has been denied. The prosecutor started ranting against Anna and the whole court system as he packed up his papers and slammed his folder on the table. Anna released a silent sigh and the courtroom was filled with cheers of bravo as Lady Justice stood in all her beauty courtesying sweetly to an adoring audience. And the judge walked out of the courtroom, heart dancing, as a little voice in her head said, See, this is why you became a judge. And she felt a tingling in the palms of her hands. <laughs>